Hello everyone, Zaid from Z Security here, and in today's video, Dimitris is going to show you how to exploit a server side template injection or an SSTI in order to hack into a remote server. He's going to demonstrate this by hacking into the doctor machine from Hack the Box, so it should be both enjoyable and useful to follow along. Guys, Dimitris has his own YouTube channel right now, so if you're enjoying his content, then make sure you check out his channel and subscribe to him. I will include a link to his channel in the description of this video. Also, if you're enjoying this content, then make sure you make some noise for the algorithm and show us some love by smashing that like button, share the video, and don't forget to actually subscribe to our own channel if you haven't done so already and hit the bell. This is another video that is taken from a live session that we did in our VIP community. I do live sessions and live classes there myself also every month. So if you're interested in watching all of our previous live sessions and be there for the next live classes, then make sure you check out our VIP community. Again, I'm gonna include links to it in the description. Hello and welcome to yet another live hacking session on the VIP Z Security Discord server. My name is Dimitris and today we're going to hack the doctor machine from Hack the Box. This box is easy rated and I will show you how to root it. So without further ado, let's get started. I'm going to start off with a simple nmap scan and the command I'll be using is nmap-sv which probes all the open ports does A to enable the OS detection and I will specify the IP of the machine which is this one. Going back to my terminal I will execute the nmap scan and we'll wait for it to end. Great, now that we have the scan, the, the scan results, we can see that port 22 for SSH, 80 for Apache and 8089 for Splunk are open. A quick Google search will let us know that Splunk Universal Forwarder is listening on this specified port, but we'll leave this for now, we'll get back to it later. So now let's browse the website. I will add the IP of the machine and we'll see what we get. We get a doctor's page, but as you can see guys here there's something really interesting uh, in this page and it's the mentioned virtual host on the email address that they give us. So if I go ahead and add this virtual host over here, I have already added it but I'll just comment it out. So after I add this virtual host to my etc host file and then access the doctors.hack the box, we'll get a completely different page. Now we can see that we're on some sort of CMS for the doctors that allows them to communicate with messages. Let's try to register to the site. I'll use test credentials. Okay, my account has been created. And we have successfully logged in. Let's try to send a new message. I will give it some test values to see what happens. Great, we have our message posted. Like I always say, it is always a great idea to check, out, to check the source code of any given page that you are either doing a pen test on or, it, or you're doing a CTF. You might find really cool stuff in there. So I will press Ctrl U and this will give me the source code of the page. If we do a close-up inspection, we can see that there is commented code over here and it lets us know that there is an existing page under archive but it's still undergoing beta testing. So let's check it out. I will delete this and let's try to access archive. We can see a blank page but after inspecting the source code again using Control u we can see an XML output. It appears to contain the contents of the post I previously created. Now, theoretically speaking, if the user provides a title value that is not sanitized, then the page might be vulnerable to server-side template injection, which is SSTI for short. 
An SSDI occurs when an attacker is able to control the value of the template va variable and insert a malicious payload into the template. The template then gets passed to the server and it gets executed. In order to test for the SSDI vulnerability, we can use the following chart found on this GitHub page. This process can help us identify the template engine and use in the template engine in use and determine the type of payload that can be used in order to validate the remote code execution vulnerability. So now I will create a post and I will add the input the I will input the title as this one. So let's go back to the CMS, create a new post. I actually have to log in back to my account. I don't know why this is. No such luck. Okay, let's try to register again. Great, okay. So, like I said, we have to add this as the title of the post. So I'll do just that. And now I'll post it with the test as contents. And now if we navigate back to the archive page and reload it, we can see that the command did not execute. So let's move to the second payload, which, which is this one. So if this was successful, we would move to this one. And then, so we, we would do the same thing for this one if it was successful. Uh, and if it was not, we would do the same thing again and again and again until we find the correct template. Uh, so this did not execute. So we move on to this one. I'll delete this and I'll add just more of these. Now let's try to reload the page. And as you can see guys, the title of the post is shown to be 49 instead of the one that we inputted before, which successfully validates the SSDI vulnerability. Let's use the next payload to determine the template engine in use. So I will use this one because it was successful. And if this was not successful, it means that it was not vulnerable at all. So let's see. I will edit my post. And we can see that the result is a bunch of sevens, which according to the chart, we can see that the engine running is Jinja 2. And if we do a little bit of research, we will find out this reverse cell payload for the template engine. Because there is too much digging on this, I'll just copy it in and paste it over here. So now what we want to do is actually take this payload and use this as a title. So I will paste this right here. And I will change the IP to mine, which is this one. Let me just confirm that. Yes, that's the one. I'll use port 1234 and I'll keep the contents as test. I will post this. I will clear my screen over here and I will start a Netcat listener on port 1234. Now, if I go back to the archive and reload the page, we can see that we get the initial access. So great, if this was a pen test, we would stop here and write down a report of all of the vulnerabilities that we found so far. But in this case, we need to become root in order to obtain the root flag. So let's get to it. Firstly, let's get a Python PTI cell up and running. Great, now we got that. I will also export uh, term equals xterm. And now this will allow me to clear my screen. So let's get to the uh, routing of the machine. Now let's enumerate the users on the machine by inspecting the etc password file. 
we can see that there are two useful users right here, which is sound and Splunk. Using the group command, uh, excuse me, the groups command, we can see that these users are members of the ADM group, which is used to monitor tasks and they have access to the log files, which is stored under var and log. Knowing this information, we can check the logs for any passwords and the command I'll be using is grep r e and I'll specify the keyword that I want on the var log. So this command will give me any line that contains the word password in it on this given file. So let's see what we get. We can see right here a bunch of information, but we're interested in this one. It was a post request and it appears that the user has accidentally put his password in the email tab so it was visible to us. So we got a password. Let's clear my screen again. And remember we had two users, so let's first try to privilege escalate to Splunk using this password and it appears that is it's not successful so let's become sound and we privilege escalate to sound now that we got the user we can go under home sound and now we can cut the user flag the user.txt great so now we got the first step out of two done now thinking back to our initial enumeration, a Splunk forwarder instance is running on port 8089. Searching online for the keyword Splunk Universal Forwarder Exploit gives us this page, which uh, actually details using the Splunk Whisperer tool in order to get a cell as the super user account. I will now see under which user Splunk is being user is run is being run at, and I will use the command ps aux and grep Splunk. So the first command with will list the processes running on the machine, but grep will actually show me only the results that include Splunk. So let's do that. And we can see that indeed Splunk is being run by root. So we can try and get this exploit and get it to work. I will copy the GitHub link. I'll create a new tab, go to my desktop. And I will clone this repository right here. I will cd into it. And we want to use this exploit because we're not running something locally. We want to do that remotely. So let's run it with Python 3. And let's see what we've got to specify. We've got to specify host, the L host. And I believe we need to do that. But let's see if we have to do that. And I'll specify the payload as well. So we have to do host. And the host is this one the IP of the machine. We also have to specify L host, which is my IP. And let's see if we can actually run a payload. Let's run ID. So we get an error, it says unauthorized. So we actually have to specify the username, which is sound. And the password, uh, which was guitar123. And I'll specify the payload. Let's see if we can run ID. So it appears that we got authenticated. Um, and maybe this uh, did run. Um, so what we want to do is actually gain a reverse cell as the root user. So I will use this payload. I actually um, used many of these and a bunch of them did not work. This one was successful. That's why I have it right here. You can use this as well. Uh, but please 
keep in mind that you have to uh, change the IP address and the port that you want to use. So now I will clear my screen once again and I'll use this payload. I will create a new tab, start a new Netcat listener on port 4444 and I will run this. Let's see what we get. It appears that it did run and we actually got a reversal back. Let's check which user are we and we are root. So now I can just go to the root directory and cut the root flag. And now we have successfully rooted the machine. That's it for today. I hope you found this video useful. Don't forget to subscribe to Dimitris and subscribe to our channel to stay updated with the latest in cybersecurity.